what are the best NLP books? What aren't the best NLP books? You know, they're just all, you know. Um, so I tried to limit myself to like three and I have um, 18, sorry. Uh, and, and there's a lot I excluded. So let's just talk about NLP books. Yeah, so this was difficult. How the hell am I supposed to narrow down my favorite books of my biggest obsession, biggest passion? We're talking about the most effective tool for influencing your consciousness. Which book is the best book? They're all the best book, except for some ones that are bad. There are bad NLP books too, but we won't mention those. Should I go, Should do you think I should mention bad training, bad books, or should we just leave them alone? What do you think? You tell me. I'm curious to hear your opinion. Uh, but let's start with good, yeah? So I'm gonna mention a couple uh, that I think are must-reads. The Meta Pattern, The Swish Pattern, The Hypnotic Coach. These are three books from the HNLP camp, specifically the Intelligent Hypnotist Group. I've had an extreme privilege to be able to train with Sean Carson, Sarah Carson, and Jess Marion, who are incredibly humble, incredibly talented coaches and trainers. And, uh, you know, in terms of quality NLP training, the HNLP family, which is kind of under the umbrella of Sean Carson, that they all learned from Sean. Sorry, not Sean Carson, John Overdurf. I apologize for that. Um, they're doing NLP, but they have a take on NLP that in my opinion makes it a lot easier for you to use it effectively. And you'll get that from the books, the meta pattern, the swish pattern. The way, they, the way that they explain change work and, and the hypnotic coach as well, their approach to coaching I think is absolutely brilliant. It took me out of my logical mind where I'm like, this is this technique and let's follow this process and do it this way and allowed me to become more conversational and also more influential and natural with kind of brought Erickson back into the NLP for me. Brilliant stuff. Uh, at their training, they did a DTI with Erickson, by the way, all for the group. Pff, good, good stuff. And I would say everything I say about these books, you can learn a lot in that NLP in books. You can't learn it fully. Like the majority of your learning NLP comes from training. Okay. Um, NLP, the new technology of achievement. Hold that thought. Back. Do you think I like this book? I've read it so many times. Both covers have fallen off and I have... I like this book. Um, Steve Andreas, Charles Faulkner, and others. Holy crap. Um, the number of distinctions and insights and NLP techniques in this book, awesome stuff. What else we got? Um, I'm gonna save this one for later. Uh, Richard Bandler's Guide to Transformations. One of my friends has my hard copy of this right now, but if you saw it, it would be just like this. So I'll, I'll cut to a picture of it for you. Um, uh, just gr great, great stuff. Teaches you hypnotic principles in a very easy to understand way. Um, there's another book of his that I really like as well um, that's recent. Getting the Life You Want because it gives you all the recipes for um, different things. Like, in NLP, you have belief change stuff, you have strategy stuff, you have state stuff. In Getting the Life You Want, Dr. Bandler took specific applications of NLP processes, like I don't like doing my taxes or boring family events. And he teaches you how to do time distortion for those things. It's a great book. Uh, the transformations though is I think really gonna make you a better hypnotist. Um, cool. The User's Guide to Sleight of Mouth. Um, the original Sleight of Mouth, which is brilliant, is brilliant, is I think more technical than most people want. 
and the user's guide it makes it easier to use right away. I'm an NLP nut, so I've read both. I love both. But I think for you, most likely, unless you're a freaking nut like me, go ahead and get both. And then Robert Diltz's book on beliefs, Belief Change, uh, Pathway to Health, Wealth, and Wellbeing, Changing Belief Systems with the NLP, uh, Timeline Therapy, because I think Timeline, my thing with Timeline is I don't believe their beliefs about the unconscious necessarily, but Timeline itself, the process, holy crap, is that a fast, effective way to let go of limiting beliefs? Holy crap, I just did a timeline session with somebody just now um, on self-worth and I'm worthless and all this stuff and change was profound and it was one session. Really powerful stuff. Um, oh, and then Tony's book, UPW. The, the, the initial Unleash Your Power uh, book that Tony did, that's a NLP practitioner in a book. So it's good stuff. And Tony is quite inspiring. So I just gave you 10 books. I'm going to give you more because I'm that way. We have to talk about the classics. The classics, man. You know, uh, Turtles All the Way Down. Um, using your, oh my God. Using your brain for a change. And then Steve and Connie Ray's addition to that um, using your brain and keeping the change. I didn't know about that book, uh, but the things they talk about, uh, what to do when the switch pattern doesn't work, when they introduce timeline stuff, oh my God, that might be one of the best NLP books that's out there. It's a must read. Um, yeah. Um, this one, is called Training Trances. Uh, Sean, uh, it's John Overdorf and uh, Julie Silverthorne, I think one of his students. And it's great for trainers. Uh, and it's really, it's really about um, Ericksonian technique in the training context. Um, this is what I'm reading currently. This is on multiple embedded metaphor and Ericksonian therapy, freaking excellent. Um, other specific applications um, persuasion engineering for sales and then Michael Hall's book about persuade he wrote a book about a book it's called like the tagline is did you read persuasion engineering and think what the hell did I just read uh, well then this book is for you Richard Bandler uh, wrote that book hypnotically so you get a lot of stuff unconsciously but you don't get conscious mind understanding necessarily so Michael Hall wrote a book for people who read that book. I think it's a great, uh, it's a great add-on. Michael Hall, by the way, I've recently in the last couple months gone on a Michael Hall tear, and he has a book on every specific application you could think of. The man is prolific, and he researches things so in depth. Um, I want to explore his metastate stuff a little bit more. Um, I'm sorry, Michael, forgive me for saying this. Isn't metastates just beliefs and values? Like, why do we... I don't understand the necessity of calling it metastates. Um, I don't get it. Uh, but a lot of the things that he points out when teaching metastates, I think are just spot on. Like, you know, if you do a mapping across and it doesn't stick, well, that's probably because there are beliefs and values, uh, metastates, and, and he... He puts other things under metastates as well that are getting in the way. And I think Michael has demonstrated that it's incredibly important distinction that it's not just states that are important. I think that's valid and useful. And, it, and, and I get a lot from Michael reading him. Um, but the reason I brought him up is this man's library is prolific. I wanted to learn about propulsion systems, which is something that Bandler does in his seminars. Uh, to the audience. Uh, it's a motivation. It's a push and pull motivation. And there's no writing on it except for Michael Hall. Uh, Michael Hall has a, a book on being more humorous, uh, the, the beliefs of the wealthy. Like he has a, an entire book on that he got from modeling a huge amount of self made millionaires. Uh, Michael Hall is prolific for specific applications. Go check him out. And you have to kind of look around his website to find it. It's like hidden. Um, really good stuff. 
So I gave you a lot. Let's say you're brand new to NLP. Brand new. I would read the meta pattern. The swish pattern, book the, one, the first two that I mentioned, the hypnotic coach, and I would read something on beliefs. So uh, changing belief systems with NLP. Um, yeah, that's probably where I get you started. Th be careful uh, because there are certain things that are so rewarding that once you start down a path, there's no stopping it. And there's so many levels to NLP and getting good at it. Um, you know, coaching is probably the richest experience because I'm, I'm humbled and I'm grateful. And I don't say this in a braggy way, but I'm very proud of uh, the results I can produce for clients in a short period of time. I'm very proud of it. It took me a long time to get that skilled. But there's more levels. Like I'm, as I've been reading this book on Erickson and multiple embedded metaphor, the, the beautiful thing about being an NLP coach is it's infinite how much you can continue to develop. There's always an exciting new challenge. So be careful how far down this rabbit hole you go. You may just become passionately obsessed with something that could change your life and the lives of everyone in your life.